It all started when Herbert Dawes was murdered because of a mysterious crab tin. Did you get it? This is what to look for. You disappoint us, Dawes. No! The police thought it was an accident. What are these? Objects found on a drowning victim. But I wasn't so sure. The crab tin label led me back to the harbor, to the cargo ship Caribou Jam. Look out! You missed. We must be on to something, Snowy. It was clear I wasn't wanted aboard, but I knew that's where I'd find some answers. Now we're getting somewhere. I'd found something I wasn't supposed to. There was much more to that crab tin than I thought. How do I get into these messes? Snowy! Boy, am I glad to see you! That's when I found out what was going on. I am a policeman from Japan. I've been working on this case for months. Drug smugglers. That's what it was all about. The only person that could help was the captain. I had to find him before they found me. Who are you? Don't say a word. We managed to escape and get off the ship. One of the lifeboats is gone. Fool! But that didn't stop the Look smugglers. The pilot was ordered to finish us off, but we weren't going to let them win that easily. <gasps> Help was only a call away once we reached the radio in the plane. The police should be waiting for the caribou jam when it reaches Bagar. Imagine the look on Alan's face when he sees the welcoming committee we've set up for him. Just as long as I get my hands on him before the police do. You're sure we're on the right course for Bagar? Of course we're on course. But it looks like there's trouble ahead. Oh no! We're in for a rough ride. Get your nose up! Flip your flaps! Full power to the prop! We're gonna crash! <laughs> But it sure isn't Bagar. The storm must have blown us off course. <coughs> what have you found, Snowy? <coughs> th 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 that's a camel. That was a camel. It probably died of thirst. We're as good as dead. Marooned in the middle of the desert, we'll die. Take it easy, Captain. Things aren't that bad. Really thirsty. Really thirsty. Keep moving. We can't give up. No. I've got to lie down. Which bed is mine? Okay. We'll rest in the shadow of this dune. But we can't stay long. Huh? 
How are we ever gonna get out of this one, Snowy? A bottle of champagne! I'm saved! Saved! Ha ha ha! Confounded cork! On too tight! Captain! Yeah! Take it easy! The heat must be getting to you. Look! A lake! We're saved! Oh, no. <laughs> Captain! It's only a mirage! <laughs> Come in. I'm Lieutenant Delcourt, in command of this outpost. Pleased to meet you. I'm Tintin. Take a seat, please, Mr. Tintin. You had us all quite worried. It was sheer luck that we found you, really. My men came across the wreckage of your plane and followed the tracks. They found the three of you unconscious. What about the captain? Is he all right? A drink? I need a drink? <laughs> He's all right. Good heavens, where are my manners? Name your poison, gentlemen. No thanks, and none for the captain either. What? Captain? Oh, all right. So tell me, what brings you to this forsaken sandbox of ours? We interrupt this program with a special report. Severe weather at sea has caused heavy losses to shipping. Gale winds have driven the ships Tanganyika and the Jupiter ashore and an SOS was received from the merchant ship Karabujan. A rescue vessel searched the area, but no wreckage or survivors were found. Bungi. It is presumed the Karabujan went down with all hands. Impossible! To sink without having time to abandon ship? I don't believe it! Yes, I agree. Lieutenant! We must get to Bagar immediately! As soon as we reach Bagar, we'll check in at the Harbor Master's office. They'll know one way or the other if the Caribou Jan sank. Blistering barnacles! Leaves! Quick! Behind the sand dune! Outnumbered and short of bullets. Confound everything! The last one! Revenge! 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 Captain! Desert tramps! Swine! Jellyfish! Troglodytes! Captain, stop! They'll kill you! Rats! Endoplasms! Freshwater swabs! Snowy! He's scaring them off! Come back here, you cowards, and I'll give you a taste of my rifle back! Nice going, Captain. If they'd waited, I would have shown them no one shoots at me and gets away with it. After them, men. They're getting away. Lieutenant. I received a dispatch warning about bandits in the area. Looks like we got here just in time. You, you mean it wasn't me who scared off those raiders? I'm sure you did your best, Captain. But my men and I will accompany you the rest of the way. Thank you, Lieutenant. Are you 
sure the harbor master's office is this way. I could have sworn the merchant said it was the other way. Do you speak Arabic, Captain? No. Then we'll continue this way. What is it, boy? Alan! I knew the caribou jan didn't sink. Come on, Snowy. Let's see where he's going. Hey! Wait for me! Blistering huh? <coughs> barnacles! Oh, why don't there. you? Tintin! Help! Careful, Snowy. If we're lucky, Alan will lead us to whoever is buying his drugs. is Tintin. Blistering barnacles. That's the Caribou Jan. You there. The radio said the Caribou Jan went down with all hands. So what's it doing here? This here's the Jabel Amila. Can't you read? Of course I can read. But that's the Caribou Jan. You. You mutinous deck rat. Tell him the real name of this ship. Do you know this nut? Never laid eyes on him. Police! Police! Help! Police! Police! Okay, what's the problem here? That ship, officers. It's the Caribou Jan. They said it sunk, but it didn't. I'd know her anywhere, because I'm her captain, and she's loaded with crab meat. I, I mean, opium. And we just escaped by the skin of our teeth in a longboat, and we flew into a terrible storm and crashed in the desert. Oh, you'd better come with us. But it's the truth, I tell ya! What? Haddock? You sure? Then you can bet Tintin's not far behind. I don't care how you do it, but get me Haddock! Alive! <laughs> and don't let it happen again! Flatfoots! Pencil pushers! You wouldn't know a crime if you fell over one, you miserable navvy-like gherkins. Help! Outlaws! Brigands! Captain! Bushwhackers! <laughs> Captain! <laughs> Our only chance of finding the captain is to go back to where we lost Alan. Remember, Thompson, we are friendly locals. Precisely. Inconspicuous and blending in with the crowd. <laughs> Thompson and Thompson! Excuse us, please, but we are not Thompson and Thompson. We are friendly locals. Detectives? It's me, Tintin. Alive! And well! I need your help. So far, the only clue are the crab tins. And you say the drugs are hidden inside the tins? Yes. They've got a gold label with a red crab. But we saw some tins like that this morning. Where? Well, uh, uh, I think... Uh, There's a lot of strange shops in these towns, you know. <laughs> Where are you going? Well? Crab. What are you doing? Don't worry, sir. We'll pay. Yes. yes. But could you tell us who supplies you with these tins? Certainly, young sir. They come from Omar ben Salad, the wealthiest trader in all of Baghdad. Thank you, sir. Ask around about Mr. Salad, but be discreet, okay? Snowy and I will try to find the captain. Right then. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. Wait, wait. Who's going to pay? Huh? Oh. A 
thousand blessings on you. I know it's hot, boy, but the only way to find the captain is to find Alan. He came this way once, he may come this way again. Found it, paving stones. What do you say we pay him a visit? There he goes. Keep up with him, Thompson. Be discreet. I'll bet he went down there. Where'd he go? I wonder if... A secret door! are full of drugs. Untie me, you Neanderthals! <gasps> Captain! Crooks! Confidence men! Yell all you want. No one's gonna hear you. Now for the last time, where's Tintin? Here I am. Tintin! My boy, I'm so glad to see you. Don't make a move. Captain, keep an eye on them while I find Alan. Whoa! Whoa! Ah, ah. Freeze. Ah, gentlemen, do sit down. May I offer you some refreshments? No, thank you, Mr. Salad. This visit is strictly business. Quite so. We're conducting an investigation. A very discreet investigation? I see. And what is the nature of your investigation, gentlemen? We, we think, think you're smuggling, smuggling drugs. By the beard of the prophet, how dare you? Ah, get out. Get out, or I'll have you flogged. Guards! Guards! Throw! Run for it, Omar! The jig is up! I'm leaving now, detectives. I'm afraid I'll have to eliminate you. Of course. Good boy, Snowy. Tintin, well done. Don't let him out of your sight. He's heading for the dock, Snowy. Stop him! He's stealing my boat! Hey! Hey! Stop!
the filthy pirates? Mutineers, scallywags, fatheads? The correct spelling for that is Thompson with a P. If it wasn't for the actions of Mr. Tintin and his friends, none of this would have been possible. Bungie, you made it! Thanks to you, Tintin. And Thompson without a P. How's it feel to be a hero, Mr. Tintin? It feels great. Ruff, 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 ruff. In other news today, there has been an increase in pickpocket activity throughout the city. There seems to be no specific location where the pickpocket or pickpocket strike, which have the police completely baffled. Also, the pickpocket is highly skilled, and most victims are unaware of the theft, making time and location extremely difficult to pinpoint. The common item of theft is men's wallets. In an effort to put a stop to these activities, police have assigned their two top men, Detectives Thompson and Thompson. <laughs> we won't find that pesky pickpocket looking in the files, Thompson. Precisely. To the streets, Thompson. We'll catch him in no time at all. Oh, dear. He forgot his cane again. Oh, dear. I forgot my cane again. Oh. <laughs> <Oy>. <laughs> Snowy! Snowy! I'm done, sir. Wow! This is a new one. Here you go, sir. Hello, Tintin. Thompson and Thompson. Hi, detectives. Good to see you again. A little Sunday shopping? Actually, we're here on a case. We've been assigned to catch that pesky pickpocket. The one who's been in the papers. Yes, and uh, we just happened to notice these uh, splendid sticks. Uh, quite a coincidence. Quite. So, uh, after we purchase these delightful sticks, Thompson, we better be on our way. My wallet. It's gone. The pickpocket. 
Hey, he got my wallet too! It's okay, detectives. I'll take care of this. You can pay me back next time I see you. We must report this immediately, Thompson. Yes. Thank you, Tintin. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye detectives. Poor Thompson and Thompson. Wait up, Snowy! <coughs> wow! Isn't she a beauty? Yes, she sure is. Twenty-five dollars and she's yours. What do you say, Snowy? Think the captain would like it? <coughs> would you take twenty dollars? Sure. It's a deal. How much is that ship? Sorry, sir, I just sold it. Let me buy it from you. But I don't want to sell. How much for the model? It's already been sold. To who? To me. Come on, Snowy, let's go. I'll give you 40 bucks. Whatever he said, I'll double it. Get lost. I was here first. What about 50? I'll raise it to 60. 70. 80. 90. 100. No! I don't want to sell, gentlemen. I don't believe the nerve of those guys. I wonder why those men were so insistent on buying this model. I just thought it would be a nice present for Captain Haddock. I bet he'll be surprised to see it. Captain? You again! Yes, I apologize for my persistence, young man. But I'd like you to take my card, in case you decide to sell. Fine. Goodbye! Snowy! Oh no, it's broken! What? Ahoy there, landlubber! Captain, look! I got a present Ten for you! Ten thousand thundering typhoons! Do you like it? Like it? Why, it's incredible! Quick! We must go to my place! Huh? No, Tintin! No! Captain? What's going on? An extraordinary coincidence! Captain! That's my great, great ancestor, Sir Francis Haddock. He looks exactly like you. Yes, he is good looking. Arr. Take a closer look at this ship. It's just like the model. Exactly. And speaking of the model, I didn't bring it. It's gone. Hello? Someone stole the ship, Captain. Stole my ship? Why, those miserable slugs? Freshwater swabs! Just wait till I get my hands on them, and I'll spear their ears. I'll mash their brains. I'll... Gotta go, Captain. Bye. Tintin? Tintin! Coming. Coming! Mr. Saccharin! Aha! A model of the unicorn! Just as I thought! My ship! Could you explain to me how it got here, please? I'm afraid you've made a mistake, young fellow. I've had this model for over ten years. We'll see about that. Young man! Whatever are you doing? The mast isn't broken. I'm sorry, Mr. Saccharin. It's not my ship. I quite understand your surprise. I felt the same way this morning. I had thought my ship was an original. I'm really very sorry, Mr. Saccharin. I won't bother you any longer. I hope you find your ship, young man. Thank you, sir. Goodbye. Two identical ships modeled after the unicorn. It doesn't make sense at all. I'd better call the captain. Occupied. <gasps> Fine.
Finally! We can go now, Pee-Pee. It stopped raining. Hmm. He must have gone out. Let's go, Snowy. What kind of thieves don't steal anything, Snowy? Who is it? Thompson and Thompson. Hi, detectives. Hello, Tintin. We're here to pay you back for the sticks. Ow. I've been robbed again! Me too! It must have been that man we saw here last night when we came to pay you back. What man? White male, about five foot five, with black hair and a mustache. The man from the market. Obviously, the pickpocket's still on the loose. We'll have to keep our eyes open, Thompson. Uh -oh. Thompson! Here, Thompson. I'm downstairs already. So the man from the market was here. What are you doing, Snowy? What's this? Three brothers joined. Three unicorns in company sailing in the noonday sun will speak. For it is from the light that light will dawn and then shines forth. The Eagle's Cross. How mysterious. This must have been hidden in the ship's mast. It must have fallen out and rolled under the sideboard. And whoever stole the model knew it was there. That's why they came back. Why? What does it mean? Of course! Quick, Snowy, to the captains! We're going on a treasure hunt! Yeah! And continuing our coverage of the pickpocket problem, police report they are checking several leads and appeal to the public for any information that could lead to an arrest. Citizens are asked to contact Detectives Thompson and Thompson. Captain! Captain? It's me, Tintin! Captain, wake up! Is anything wrong? The captain won't open his door. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Captain Haddock? Captain? Come one pace nearer and I'll blast you to blazes! Something's wrong. <laughs> Hold on, Captain! I'm coming! One, two, three! Gherkins, Buccaneers, filibusters! Let's get the sea dogs on the run with a yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Tintin, my boy. What's going on, Captain? Look, landlubber, you see that man? Francis Haddock. Sir Francis Haddock! Anyway, I found this chest in my attic last night, and you'll never guess what was in it. Treasure? No! A journal! A journal? Look! Sir Francis Haddock's journal! Yes, and listen to this. It's the year 1676. The Unicorn, a valiant ship of King Charles I's fleet, has left Barbados in the West Indies to set sail for home. Suddenly there's a cry from above. Still on the port now! Thunder and Typhoon, she's coming up close! She'll cut across my bow! She's running up her colors! Pirates! Ahoy there! Clear the decks! Stand by to haul wind!
the unicorn was going to try to outrun them. Thunder and typhoons? It's no use. She's overhauling us fast. There was only one thing to do. The unicorn had to outwit the pirates. Closer, me hatties. Closer. That's the way. Closer! Ready about? Let go the braces! The unicorn had taken the pirates by surprise. They had no time to alter course. Gunners, take your places! But it wasn't enough! The pirate ship was damaged, but wasn't sinking. Look! She's hoisted fresh colors! The red flag! A fight to the death! No prisoners taken! The pirates were closing in. They'd managed to maneuver behind the unicorn to avoid the fire of her guns. No more than half a cable's length away, the pirate ship suddenly slips under the unicorn's poop. Like this! The two ships are now side by side! Wow! The pirates are ready to board. Weapons are drawn. Grappling irons are hurled. The fight to the death begins! Out of the way! Back, you sea lice! Dirt dogs! Thieving toads! Yourself, you braggart! Yeah! So you want to kill me, huh? You gherkin! Well, take that! And that! Attack me from behind, would you? Then how about this? That's what happened to Sir Francis, too. A heavy block fell on his head and he fell to the deck stunned. The pirates had won. Every last unicorn man was forced to walk the plank. Uh, what's happening? Where's my crew? Oh, blister and barnacles! You murdering maggots! Thieving toads! <laughs> I am Red Rackham. And I'm Sir Francis Haddock. The name Red Rackham should make your blood freeze, sea dog. Ha! Never mind. My ship is sinking because of your devilish gunners, so I'm taking over the unicorn. My men are just transferring the booty, and what booty it is indeed. <laughs> Enjoy the hours of the night, Sir Francis, because tomorrow at dawn, you die. <laughs> that night, the unicorn dropped anchor in a sheltered cove of a small, deserted island. Flushed with victory, the pirates were celebrating. That's the way, me hearties. The party's not complete yet. 
He was on his way to the hold where the unicorn's gunpowder was stored. This celebration is missing a few fireworks. I'll save your beard, you porcupine, and I'll pluck your feathers, you poppin' jay! He realized he was going to be blown sky-high unless he extinguished the fuse! So he did! Ow! I'm getting angry, Red Rackham! Snowy! Ah-ha! I've got ya now! Captain! Ah! Captain? Red Rackham is dead! May heaven forgive your wicked soul. Francis lived on the island for another two years before being rescued. And that's where the journal ends. On the last page is a message to his three sons. He left them each a model of the unicorn, built and rigged by himself. He says that they should move the mast and the truth will be complete. That's it! Red Rockham's treasure! The maps for Red Rockham's treasure are hidden in the masts. Treasure? Treasure! A yo-ho-ho -ho and a bottle of rum! Red butt maps! Don't worry, Captain. We already have one and Mr. Saffron has the second. All we have to do is find the third and Red Rackham's treasure will be ours! Yo-ho-ho -ho and a bottle of rum! Red Rackham's treasure! Here we come! Yeah! And as a follow-up on the pickpocket story, I have Detectives Thompson and Thompson in the studio with me. Tell me, Detectives, how close are you to actually catching the pickpocket? Uh, well, we, uh, to be precise, we are very close. Precisely. Very close indeed. Do you have a suspect? Oh, well, yes. We are checking our files on pickpockets very closely. With no page left unturned. You can be assured that if there is a pickpocket out there, we will find him in here. Thank you, detectives. Best of luck on your investigation.
It all started when I met Thompson and Thompson at the local market. A little Sunday shopping? Actually, we're here on a case. We've been assigned to catch that pesky pickpocket. Then I saw it. Wow! A beautiful model ship. Would you take $20? How much is that ship? Sorry, sir. I just sold it. How much for the ship? What about 50? I'll raise it to 60. 70? No! I don't want to sell, gentlemen. I couldn't understand what the big fuss was all about. Snowy! Oh no, it's broken! It seemed this little model was hiding a big secret, but apparently somebody else knew about the secret and was willing to go to any length to unravel its mystery. They had taken the model but missed the real object of their search. The parchment. 42, zero, one. The Eagle's Cross. How mysterious. I suspected Mr. Saccharin had stolen my model. Aha! Just as I thought. I've had this model for over ten years. Two identical models. What next? Sir Francis Haddock. He looks exactly like you. Take a closer look at this shell. It's just like the model. I found this chest in my attic last night, and you'll never guess what was in it. Look! Sir Francis Haddock's journal. Yes, and listen to this. Captain Haddock told me the story of his great ancestor, Sir Francis Haddock, who sailed His Majesty's ship, the Unicorn. The journal describes one fateful voyage when the Unicorn came face to face with pirates. They were led by the most feared pirate of all time. I am Red Rackham. And I'm Sir Francis Haddock. <laughs> While Red Rackham gloated over his treasure, Sir Francis tried to remain calm in the face of death. But he was determined not to go without a fight. The final confrontation was at hand. Prepare to die, Sir Francis. The crew was unaware of the life and death struggle below. It was the end of Red Rackham. May heaven forgive your wicked soul. Years later, Sir Francis wrote a message to his three sons. He left them each a model of the unicorn and said they should move the mast and the truth would be complete. And that's where the journal ends. That's it! Red Rackham's treasure! The maps for Red Rackham's treasure are hidden in the masts! You ho ho and a bottle of rum! Red Rackham's treasure! Here we come! <laughs> Let's go. Blue blistering barnacles, what a grouch. We've got to get to Mr. Saccharin's. He's anxious to see if the parchment in his model ship matches the one I found. It could bring us one step closer to the treasure. Thundering typhoons! Ooh. Oh dear. Sorry, young man. I uh, wasn't paying attention. No problem, sir. Good day, gentlemen. Is he? He's still alive. Look. Another unicorn. And the mast is broken. <gasps> Someone stole the parchment. But that means holy thunderous thunderclouds. Someone else is after the treasure. Mm-hmm. Police! No one move! Thompson and Thompson! 
be advised that anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. Ah, oh, here's the victim. To be precise, the victim is here. And where there's a victim, there's usually a culprit. And usually quite close. Aha! What? Why, you miserable earthworms! Sycophantic sea gherkins, black beetles, sea lice! <laughs> Excuse me, would ya? Crab apples! No, Captain! Stop! Ectomorphs! Put them up, ya troglodytes! Captain! Calm yourself, Captain. It was only an experiment. What did you say, you goose cap? Well, uh, 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 you see, uh, Captain, uh, if you really were the culprit, then obviously you'd be worried. Obviously. Therefore, you must be innocent. Quite right. Indeed. No hard feelings. Get out of my sight, you miserable nappy. What? He's gone. Oh. Oh. <gasps> Can you tell us what happened, Mr. Saccharin? A man came by with some antique engravings. I was examining them when something covered my nose. I don't remember anymore. Chloroform. Oh. Mr. Saccharin, this is very important. Could you describe the man for us? Well, he had black hair and a moustache, and I was sure I'd seen him before. How much for the model? For the model. For the model. How much for the model? For the, model. For the model? The man from the market. Yes, yes, it was him. Get some rest, Mr. Saffron. Don't worry, we'll find him. Obviously, that man stole the parchment, detectives. I'll show you mine so you know what to look for. My wallet's gone! Gone? What do you mean, gone? That's my treasure we're talking about! Someone must have stolen it! One can't be too careful with that pickpocket around. Take a tip from us. Try to steal my wallet. Go ahead, try. There you go. Simple but effective. <laughs> An elastic band! Stop this dumb fool, Retentian. What are we going to do? Our treasure! <laughs> it's gone! Poor Captain Haddock. He seemed quite upset. Indeed. Ah, here's, here's our, our tram. tram. My wallet! Oh! Stop! Thief! No! Oh. Stop! Got you! Thanks for finding my wallet, detectives. You're welcome. I trust nothing is missing. You trust right, detective. Yo ho ho! And a bottle of rum! Red Rackham's treasure, here, here we, we come. come! Congratulations, detectives, on solving our case so quickly. Uh, well, not quite. Uh, you see, we caught the thief's coat, but the thief wasn't in it. Hmm. Look, a dry cleaner's tag. So, if we find the dry cleaners, we'll have our thief. <sighs> Easy, Snowy. Captain Haddock, that's him. The man from the market. Why, that no good. Wait! Let's see what he wants. Mr. Tintin, my name is Barnaby. I must talk with you. But we're not safe here. Let's go inside. After you! What 
What's taking the captain so long? Mr. Tintin? First floor. And where are the police? Need any help? Captain? Captain, I... Oh, I thought... Delivery for Mr. Tintin. Delivery for me? But I didn't order anything. This is the address we have. But surely there must be a mistake. Would you mind if I check that order form? Hey! Self into now. Ah, you're awake. Who's that? <laughs> Come on out, wherever you are. Go to the door, Tin Tin. Check the column. There's an intercom. Who are you? And what do you want? I want my parchments back. Parchments? But I only have one parchment. Correction, you have none. You'll see I took the liberty of removing your wallet earlier. Thief! It's mine! Give it back! I'm not playing games, Tin Tin. I want the other two parchments. But I'm telling you, I don't know where they are! You've got two hours. Think it over. If you're smart, you'll have some answers. Listen to me! Wait! Well, this is just great. There's got to be something I can do. I think I just discovered a hidden storage room. Stop, or I'll shoot! He's getting away! Come on! We'll get him! There's no way out! That suit of armor moved!
Another unicorn. Mr. M and G Bird. Birds. Sparrows. Now it makes sense. Hello? Captain, it's and me. And who are you? Tintin, where are you? What's going on? Uh, me? I'm Tintin. Uh, Mr. Bird's new secretary. Oh, sorry, Mr. Tintin. Lester, there's a thief in the house. Don't let him contact his accomplices. Captain, I'm at Marlin Spike Hall. I need your help. Oof! Marlin Spike Hall. Urgh. Urgh. Oh. Captain, are you there? Lester! Oh, my head. Where's Tintin? Tin? There he is. The woods! Got him! I've got him! Mr. Tin Tin, we've wasted enough time. Let's go. Snow! Good boy, Snowy. You saved my life. Tin Tin? Blistering barnacles. Why, those two scurvy landlubbers, I'll have them flayed. I'll skin them alive. I'll... Captain? Captain, I'm fine. Thanks to Snowy. But I'm telling you, I'm innocent. He's the guilty party. Tell it to the judge, you jellyfish swine. It's okay, Captain. He's telling the truth. He thinks his employers are legitimate. In that case, we're here to inform you that you're under arrest. Mr. Barnaby survived your shooting and has given us a complete statement. Barnaby's alive? Shut up! It's a trick! I assure you it's not a trick, sir. W what are we gonna do, Max? We're gonna shut up! Why don't you tell us the truth? The judge will take it under consideration and you might get a lighter sentence. It all started when we found a model of the unicorn. Shut up! No, you shut up! And then you found the hidden parchment. Yes. We realized it was part of a treasure map, but we needed the other two parts. And that's why we hired Barnaby. To find the other ships. Mine and Mr. Sackrin's. We told him to steal the parchments, but then he said he was going to tell you unless we paid him more money. So you shot him, you miserable earthworm. I'm not sure I understand. Why did you kidnap me if Barnaby had the parchments? Because I stole the parchments from him, and you stole them from me! Now give me my wallet back, Tin Tin! But I didn't steal your wallet! The pickpocket! Oh, we can help you with that! You can? We've tracked down the pickpocket! Mr. Silk, you're under arrest for pickpocketing and thievery! Me? A thief? Aristide Silk? How can you substantiate such an accusation, sirs? We tracked you down through your dry cleaners. There's no point in denying it. But I assure you, gentlemen, my intentions are honorable. I appeal to you as a retired official who upholds the law. Eureka! I found the wallets and the parchments. Let me show you to the door, gentlemen. <laughs> Well, obviously you made a mistake, Thompson. No! Obviously you made a mistake, Thompson. Mr. Silk made the mistake, gentlemen. He has an unusual hobby. Ask him to show you his wallet collection. For today.
is from the light that light will dawn. It's, it's latitude and longitude. 10,000 typhoons! It's where the unicorns sank. This means we're gonna be rich. Yo-ho-ho -ho -ho and a bottle of rum.